Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are live, ready to get into Ascension Esports Elder League. And today, we had a little bit of a canceling of a matchup between Pico de Gallo and some other team who I can't remember for some reason. But Pico de Gallo did forfeit. They did not show up in time, so we do have an off-scheduled match, which is Behilder Esports versus the Chosen Five. I'm your cast of the day, Desrox, followed by my co-casters, plural, Sordo and Rafa. Skirt, skirt! Oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> How are you guys today? Yeah, we're about to get freaking lit AF and the most politely family-friendly stream <laughs> way. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, a little, a little too true there. This, wow, this... we are running through pick and man select right here. Um... I guess they did go through Pro Draft already, but just talking over these bands right now, sort of though, just like we got Akali, Rumble, and Renekton from Brunhilde Esports versus Aatrox, Rakan, and Zoe bands. Pretty pretty standard, other than I would say the Renekton pick looks to be maybe a counter, would you say? Yeah, I mean, they kind of just want, you know, two tanks in the top lane, and Renekton does fairly well into tanks, especially early with the press the attack and or conqueror. And the fact that he spikes so early with the black cleaver and Tmont. So I can see why, especially if uh Brahilder wants to pick the Gragas, it's an excellent match if they get rid of the Renekton. 
But I do like the Zoe ban. I will always like the Zoe ban, even though they gutted her and are reworking her next patch. God bless. <laughs> And with these teams pretty much fully already locked in, we're going to get to that last pick. It should be a Leona. You have to feel a lot of emphasis coming out towards a type of team fighting style from the Chosen Five. Yeah, the Chosen Five just want to get in your face and be like, all right, you think you're running. He's not getting away. Call of the Forge God, never move. Leona Ultimate, Leona E, Leona Q, Trundle Pillar. It's like if you really try to run away, you're not going to get very far. On the side of the, uh, Bri ah, I can't pronounce the Brynhildr, name. Brynhildr, my friend. Bryn Brynhildr. There we go. I'm just going to call them BHE. So on the side <laughs> of BHE, they do have a lot of disengage, but they need time to scale, especially with the Rise, the Caitlyn. Gragas does take a few items to get tanky. The only really early game, and I put it quotes around early game, is the Jax, because he can gank level two with his leap counter strike, put pressure around the map, and he can also fight the Trundle pre-6. So, for BHE, as long as they can contain themselves and not just, you know, bleed out gold like crazy, if they can get to that 30-minute mark, they can completely steamroll over the Chosen Five. But if the Chosen Five can get their feet on the ground and just keep the game at their tempo and just engage when they want to, the Chosen Five should just run over BHE. Now, the only counter argument I would pretty much say to that is, like you said, that Trundle has to pretty much steamroll the early game. But this Jax jungle is an interesting pick, as normally we have seen in the past when Jax jungle first emerged as a answer to the likes of Kha'Zix or even Zen Zhao's when it was starting to pop up in the middle of the first half of the season, a Jax jungle is just one of those champions that can build full tank. And then you just use the utility of leap strike and the counter strike to get ganks going. And then just being able to duel one V one against the trundle. If you can win that matchup, you can slow down the trundle. And then I was looking at the side of Brunhilde esports as well. Gragas is pretty much the only tank that you're going to be more than likely stealing stats from unless Jax does go full tank. But there, I'm interested in seeing the possibility of this because it, you know, this the side from the chosen five is pretty much cut and dry. You have really great engage, disengage options, and you have practically a four man front line for this Tristana to just make resets on. But other than that, I'm always interested in seeing like the the weird picks the the strange pocket picks, and then that can always throw a curve into a team like the Chosen Five who are not prepared for it. I feel like a lot of this game does depend, for the side of BHE, on that Jax. If he can get ahead early, and he's allowed to build, you know, the Trinity Force, Sterex, Gage, into a more tankier build, instead of going Cinder Hulk into Titanic Hydra full tank, I think that's going to be the difference. Because if the Jax does get behind i feel he's just gonna end up building tank and he's just a cc bot whereas if he was damaged he might be able to disrupt the front line because you cannot underestimate the jacks damage with the trinity force let's just get that out right jacks will out damage trundle if he's allowed to build damage if he builds tank he's screwed the trundle will just run over him he'll he'll subjugate the jacks will counter strike but at that point it's a little bit too late so for BHE, a lot of this revolves around the Jacks. If the Jacks can get ahead, they're going to be in great position to get the Caitlyn to three items, maybe even four items. They're going to allow the Rise to get his tier fully stacked, get the Roa, get the tier, and then go into probably a Morello's, I'd say, because everyone on the side of, uh, of the Chosen Five heals. So a lot of this game is on that Jax. If he messes up the early game, I don't know if BHE is going to have a good time. Right. And this is honestly where I'd argue the other case. If you're going Jungle Jacks, you're low on gold regardless. It's really, really rough if you do go for a carry build. And we're, we're, we're not doing Dragon League. We're doing Elder League. There is some skill going into all these players. It's not efficient whatsoever to go for that Trinity Force type build because you get the spike way too late. You get going way too late. 
and honestly, I feel like taking the Jacks in the jungle and the Grog as top was a mistake. Um, to switch those up, it still puts you towards that late game spiking build, but the Gragas right now is something very crucial that they need to survive the mid game. And having that Jax there, you're talking about the Jax out, out damaging the Trundle. Trundle steals your stats. Trundle is going to be kicking Jax's ass for the first 20 minutes of this game before Jax even has a chance to turn on, and even then... It's just the nature of Trundle, the way he works. He's a great duelist and a great ganker. I want to give the edge overall and take it away from the Jacks and give it to TCF. Hey, man, he got nerfed, this patch. Yeah, that's <laughs> one thing. And I do agree with you. I feel like if they would have switched and put the Jacks in the top lane versus the Orin, which is a really good matchup for Jax. Jax and the Orin mm -hmm. is beautiful. And have the Gragas, you know, we're starting to see Predator Gragas coming out. You go... Uh, Runic Echo into, you know, a somewhat tankier build, but you still go AP, which would have been great because Gragas does have a lot of early game potential. He does a lot more damage than people expect. But I do still think the Jax can kick the Trundle out of the jungle because until Trundle gets Subjugate, I feel the Jax can just Counter-Strike all the damage, especially since Trundle's damage was lowered through the nerfs that happen in patch 8.16, I do still want to give the advantage to the Jax, but if he hasn't had that much of an impact on the map pre-6, he's just going to completely mess up everything for his team. Only time will tell on that one. But it is what it is. We disagree. We'll find out who is the right caster as this game goes on. <laughs> unless, unless my friend Rafa here. Wants to go ahead and be the equalizer. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just interested for the spicy picks. And I haven't seen Jack's Jungle in a hot minute. And it was something <laughs> that I did enjoy seeing uh, when it popped up in uh, the middle of the season. So, um, But I do agree with Sordo that uh, this Jack's pick could have easily slid right into the top lane against that Orn matchup. And then I, I believe also Conquer is just an overall much better keystone for Jax. Because one thing with the Jax pick, you would rather be split pushing, just accumulating that farm, which goes back to the point that you made, Desiro. Uh, the, man, that's rough. That's rough. Man, I just, I just, Ro, I, I know you're not. <laughs> mi amigo, lo siento. Con todo mi amor. Lo, estoy diciendo. Yo que, no, yo no sé. Uh, mira. So Jax would rather be split pushing in a lane, accumulating a, a crap ton of farm. And then with the Conquer, it's Keystone is much easier to proc it when you have the four seconds in combat being procced off of hitting minions all day, every day. And then you're allowed to go that full damage build. Because press the attack Jax, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but it's less than ideal. And I would have almost liked to see this Jax jungle, even though it is in the jungle, that it still goes conquer because I would have liked to see a very manhandle or man manly kind of build. The Chad build is what I'm trying to go for. Which and <laughs> yeah, when you watch like Jax one tricks forced to play the jungle, they still go conquer and they just take all the farm. I would have loved to see if Squamp just said, all right, you know what? This game, I'm just going to carry it. I don't care. I'm going to take your farm. I'm going to take this farm. But you didn't gank me. It's like, well, I'm still taking your farm, dude taxes the usual situation with carry junglers something to make a note of uh, even though we're still talking about the junglers which i mean it is what it is the trundle took reju feed and decided to uh -huh. invade the jack uh -huh. Okay, hello. Uh, here we go. The fight breaking out. Tolerable. Gets stunned up. Uses the peeler to back him off, but backup is coming in the form of Kiwi. Tries to get the never move instead. Gets snared up himself. Yep. Rise. Great rotation over. The swing, you know, a hair late. Ends up hitting the never move onto the rise there, but, you know, Jax gets out. Almost full HP. Doesn't even burn a pot. So, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. That Riju feed, however, did almost could have been Tolerable's death sentence as it is very disrespectful to take that unless you feel like you're in a matchup where you're never going to interact with the other jungler or fear that you're going to ever be invaded by upon them. Because, I mean, Trundle does have great sustain, 
being able to chomp and then using his passive, the tribute to the king, to be able to heal max percent health off of any fallen minions around him. But when you're playing against the Jax, it's it, you have to be wary about that situation. Thankfully, that was a great pillar to disengage the fight, but it also did pull Kiwi Slap to out of a pushing lane, which caused him to kind of lose the push and take a lot of damage. He still is above in CS right now in this mid lane, but Jason just backed for to get the tier. He's already TPing back to the mid lane, so he's just going to be on time to keep up the pace. Yeah, but in the top lane, again coming out, the stun landing very cleanly onto Vicro. Vicro getting under the tower just in time. Nothing too much of a threat going on. No summoner spells burnt. Yeah, the Grog is running a bit low on mana there, so unless the Grog is, is 6, there's not really much that can be done, especially against an Orin. Unless the Orin's at the Grogus's tower, then, you know, your body slam in, flash body slam, end up just burning Orin's everything at that point. But we do <laughs> see Orin just, just sitting there hammering away. This is the one thing that I hate about Orin, and when he used to be broken, I used to hate dealing with it. He already has 10%. Oh, gosh, Leona. Burton getting caught by the Zenith Blade. It forces the flash out. This has got to bring some attention, and you notice that intention from Tolerable headed towards that bot side, looking to set up for this gank. Demon wants to do it again. Can't land the Zenith Blade, but out goes the Pillar. Killer. JJ in a very bad situation. It's not looking too good. Auto's going out. Summoner spells being burnt, but he's able to survive and get under the tower in time. My gosh, that was really well played by Tolerable to put the pillar there, wait for the Caitlyn to force her flash. The thing that I don't understand, Tolerable, just flash and get the auto. The Ignite would have ended up killing the Caitlyn and he would have got first blood. But I mean, I guess he just wanted to save the summoner. I... That's a bit questionable. It was just the heals, really. The heal summoner spell, the heal coming from Burton as well. It's easy to yeah. underestimate that amount of healing. Yeah, no. And I mean, for the side of BHE, they just picked a complete sustain lane. Ganking bot lane, unless the Leona 6 and you can chain the CC so well, I don't think will work. Because the Nami can bubble, then ebbs and flow. Oh, wait, hello. Yeah, stun landing onto Kiwi. Demonic Ascension being popped, never moved. Not going to land onto Jason. Instead, just going to get a little bit of that tick damage from his ultimate, but eventually has to pop. No one in any real threat yet. Hello worth right there. Kiwi Slap just forcing the flash and then Demonic Ascension. Without that, it's going to give Jason a much better time in this laning phase. Can definitely now shove him in with the spell flux into overload. Also has access to that realm warp if they want to go for a gank onto the bot side of the map because adjustments is now without a flash and demonic is one of those champions on leona it's once you go in you can't get out especially if you don't have flash <laughs> yeah sure. you pull the afro move special you go in just hit them up and try to walk out hope to god you get out but uh yeah, that's leona but i do like the buffs that they did to her this patch though you know her w is basically up 24 7 once you hit that uh that level five max which is what most leonas are doing now mm -hmm. so as long as the burst hits another champion it goes off a cooldown and you can just reactivate it again so it's just an increase of stats and i don't know if the caitlin nami lane is going to expect that because that leona's going to be tanky as all hell but a lot of struggling going on for jason in the mid lane Still, though, Squamp is there to provide some backup. Jason still has his flash, so he's not in immediate danger. Yeah, but he doesn't have teleport, which is kind of a bad situation. I want to see if the Jax does give over the blue buff, which, you know, I expect it to happen, which I hope it happens. Because if he does, he can just continuously shove out the Swain. Because, yes, Swain does have his Q, and it's on... I think it's like a 2.5 second cooldown at this rank. So he does have wave clear for a Kiwi Slap, but the damage that the Q does is just so minute that it doesn't really do anything. But we see Tolerable coming up here. Yeah, call the Forge God being popped. Zach using the explosive oh, cast. Oh, it does not land, but Zach 
still running, gets Sounds under the tower. He's going to be fine. Flash it forward is Vicro. He's not going to find anything off of that. And so far, no kills on the board. A very, very aggressive game, but nothing's paying off yet. So Zach. many misplays. Holy moly, Zach is an absolute monster. Oh. He used it. Actually. Yeah, still fights going on. Never move. Gonna pull Squamp closer. It looks like we'll get our first blood, but Squamp is actually able to run out in time. Jason oh, on the no run way. as well. Could no use the realm way. orbit. He gets what? out. We're still at 0-0. Zero, zero. Man, oh, we're getting blue balls right here on stream, guys. First blood still hasn't come out, and it's almost 10 minutes now. First Zack with the amazing outplay, being able to use Explosive Cast onto Vicro to force him to miss the Call of the Forge God ultimate. And then Tolerable, honestly, just mistimed the flash. As soon as he flashed, he couldn't get the auto timer incorrectly. So Zack was able to flash away as well, along with the body slam. Didn't get slammed, uh, slowed by the chomp. And Vicro's flash was just questionable at best. I mean, because he's an Orn, but he has no damage follow-up. Oh my goodness. And then we look at the play bot lane. Squamp gets out, right? CY at sign in the chat, not even close, walks out, and then Jason puts the Realm Warp down. You see the Zenith Blade coming forward, he's like, eh, you ain't gonna hit me. Gets out with the Realm Warp, everyone gets out, and right now, if I'm the Chosen Five, I'm kind of tilted at that point, because that should have been three kills. Yeah, but it looks like they might be able to find one. Nope, there goes the Goomba Hump onto the ward, and once again, Squamp gets out. After a little bit of a scare, still 0-0, zero, zero, but party on the Great map bubble. is starting to be established. Meanwhile, on the bot side, a trap, trouble, combo adjustment. Able to use the rocket jump to get out of there. And Solar Flare absolutely whipping Ace in the hole comes, but it doesn't matter. Jason's going to pick up one kill. Squamp is here going after Demon. It's four on one. Cat flash Another over the wall one. in time, and that's two kills going over to the side of Bryn Hilder Esports. That was great rotations by Bryn Hilder. They knew that the bot lane was weak, and the issue with the Chosen Five, that bot lane just wants to go in constantly. But the Nami Bobble lands onto your only damage dealer, and Leona can't really peel off a Caitlyn if the Caitlyn's in melee range. So Ka the Tristana gets trapped, headshotted again, headshotted after that, and is forced to flash, but, you know, unfortunately, you flashed right into a Rise, and that's just first blood over to him, and then great job by Squamp getting over there, picking up the Leona kill. I thought the Leona was going to flash and, you know, burn the flash and die anyways. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, imagine being the side of the Chosen Five and you were proactive for like the past 10 minutes. First with the all-in bot lane play from Demonic. Honestly, pretty much doing 90% correct moves in setting up a kill onto the Caitlyn and or the Nami, but then Tolerable, even when he came down with a Great Pillar, it didn't close the deal for the First Blood. And the same thing topside, they couldn't get the kill onto Zack and onto Squamp or Jason in the botside river. And then finally, after all the failed attempts from the Chosen Five, Brunhilder makes their first proactive play and they get a double kill. I mean, come on, that's... That's a tilter. That that's is. just straight up a tilter. But, you know, it, it matters a little bit but it's not the end of the world. You're not down that much gold. You're down 500, 600 gold, which, you know, is noticeable. But the Tristana did hit her Storm Razor. So it does allow her to farm better. It does allow her to shove the waves out better. And she can still be aggressive into the lane. If you do notice, the Rise is the one that got the kill. Ooh, but now Jason moved. getting caught out. Pillar never moved. The combo of damage coming in clean. But Jason's going to be able to stay alive. Flash it forward. Gets the oh. pop. Kiwi slap. Makes up a kill on his own. Squamp has to back out. Never move. Going to land. Pull him forward. But he's under the tower. Cannot continue that aggression. And there we go. The Chosen Five have picked up one of their own. Does appear they're still posturing towards that mid side. Yeah, no, that was great on the side, side of the Chosen Five. They recognize that the Rise flashed forward to try to get the Tristana earlier. So it's just great on them to force the Rise out. They hit the Never Move, they put the Pillar out, and that's going to be Rift Herald oh, summoned mid. No. Oh. <laughs> out comes Call of the Forge God. It's not going to land Squamp. over the wall. Squamp, Goomba Stomp, right out of there. Such a pain to deal with the Jax. He just jumps over, and this is going to be first brick over to the Chosen Five.
But like I was saying, the Jack's just getting out every single time, but Gragas, oh, you might be in a bad position. Yeah, Zach's not liking the spots he's in. He's what? gonna miss what? the body slam um, altogether. Who knows he why he's going into this fight, but he's getting what? kicked what? out with a death. Meanwhile, Jason on the other side, starting to posture forward. They're noticing the low health bars, but they're not gonna get that blue buff. Questionable, <laughs> questionable. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else but questionable because I mean, the only thing you can write that up to is Zach just having miscommunication with his jungler and his mid laner. You did, we did see Jason was slowly, not fast, slowly making his way to the jungle. But you have to realize that that is a two v three situation at best, and then without Jason there, it's one v three. So for Zach to go in so aggressively with a low amount of mana, I, I just, I don't know. Very optimistic. I mean, optimistic is the nice way to put it. I think it's just a complete <laughs> misplay in all actuality. He didn't really look at the map to see where his teammates were, and I guess he didn't realize that his mana was that low. And then to add on to the fact, he missed his uh, explosive cast, which just makes everything so much worse than what it could have been. So, I don't know. I guess erase that one. It never happened. It's <laughs> whatever. We don't talk about it because that play was bad, but Tolerable's here. Yeah, instead, we're going to talk about this because Zach once again has to burn his flash. Doesn't have body slam. And there we go again. Successful gank. And really, he did it upon himself, but on the bot side, Solar Flare going to go out. Lance on the two. Gets no stuns. Here comes the TP as well. Demonic Ascension is here as Kiwi Slap looks to find whoever he can. Drag him in. Pop him. Down goes the fish. And now JJ on the run. One more auto going to finish him off on the top side. They're looking to get another brick. Zenith Blade goes out as well as the pool. Reset. And this looks bad for Jason. He's able to get the shield. It's not going to be enough because he's going to drop. Now Squam trying to find some redemption. You're not going to find anything. Getting too close to Kiwi Slap. An adjustment. But flashes what? forward and dies for it. Oh as adjustment God. gets the triple kill. For the love of Christ. This is just going from bad to worse. It was already bad enough. You lost the Nami immediately. Caitlyn dies as well. There is no need to continue to try to go in and make, you know, a big play. You accept the fact that the play went horribly, that the Chosen Five got the advantage, but now you just made it worse for yourself. Swamp goes in, flashes every single summoner for the side of BHE is gone. And that's just going to be another tower. Oh, my oh, goodness. Teleport coming in, teleport. though. Oh, well, but a distraction oh, teleport. My uh, that was just to pull off Burton. And what do you know? It gets the teleport out of Zach as well. Ah, uh, my brain. It hurts. It hurts, boys. Everything going from good to bad to worse for the side of BHE. They're going to... I don't even think they're going to respond with the tower. No. Tolerable's here. Oh my goodness. This is just a bad time for BHE. But on the side of the Chosen Five, they're just, you know, taking advantage of, I guess, the tilt on the side of BHE. That BHE is just making bad plays over and over and over again, trying to make up for a mistake that they made before. And in all actuality, they're just making it worse for themselves. This is, this is terrible. Mm. Nice little phone no. call coming through, but... <laughs> knock, knock. The tower goes down on the bot side. That's the first tower for BHE to be picked up all game. Two unresponded demon. Gonna get cut out. Four members on him. Solar Filler goes out as well as Culture Fort God. Able to pick up two. Tidal Wave goes through. Delays the inevitable though as we're seeing TCF just push forward and annihilate BHE. They find two kills. They are able to make it three and they're set up in prime position to get whatever objectives they want. It's gonna be the Mountain Drake. The like worst part about that fight it was the fact that adjustment was practically only dealing with Zach, and he was kind of the more the most fed damage dealer on that side of the fight. But we ought to also look at Kiwi Slap. I mean, he, this guy is so huge on this Swain already. Rod of Ages uh, almost comp uh, stacked is looking about 915 more gold. Probably looking for a Morello Namacon to complete with the Blasting Wand and the Ruby Crystal, get that double penetration build. But, I mean, Sordo and 
Desrox, man, we gotta go. We gotta rewind this tape all the way back to 10 minutes when Brunhilde Esports got first blood in the two kills on the adjustment and demonic. It looked like they had set up their bot lane for success after the proactive plays had backfired for the side of the chosen five. But then, off of the call, a Kiwi slap intolerable to say, you know what, Jason had just used flash bot lane. Let's take down mid. We have the Rift Herald. We can take this turret. And honestly, from that play, it has just snowballed so successfully for the side of Chosen 5. And then in that bot lane fight on the turret dive as well, Adjustment, the person who probably needed those kills the most, happened to pick up all three for the triple kill and getting resets all over the board. So now he has a Storm Razor and a Rapid Fire Cannon. And Swamp is not going to get tolerable quite yet. I mean, the issue is, BHE is just playing into the hand- Oh, jeez, Gragas, please don't be caught out. Nah, no, he's good, nah, he's, he's good. He's good, he's good, he's just gonna body slam out. Get his fat self over back to tower. But, like I was saying, for BHE, they're just playing into the side of the Chosen Five. Chosen Five just wanna go in over and over and over and over and over again. Whenever Solar Flare is up for the Leona, they're looking just to go in. And we call the Forge God, that's just so much initiation. And if you're in a bad position like they were near the dragon, you're just gonna die every time. There's nothing that you can do. Your disengage is not as good as the Chosen Five's in-game. So this is not looking too good for BHU. Right uh, I mean, it's something we talked about in Champ Select. This is a team fighting composition. BHE are playing exactly to the song that TCF wants to play. Nothing but organized team fights. If they're complete, if they're complete makeshift all over the place, chaos going on, they thrive in that as well, thanks to Demonic Ascension as well as Solar Flare. So they're just loving the way this match has been set up, but there we go. Tolerable going forward, trying to catch out whatever he can, but not looking too good thus far. Here comes the Tidal Wave. They're going to choose to go for the team fight. Swamp might be able to pick up a kill. No, JJ picking up Tolerable. Bubbles landing one by one thus far for TCF. Not looking too good. Getting flanked. The pins are coming out. Adjustment oh, tries to man. make it work. It's not going to work too well for him. Kiwi Swap wants to get the damage in. Demonic Ascension pop takes down JJ. He is able to find some redemption, but in the end, that's four lost in favor of BHE. That was very questionable for the side of the Chosen Five. The Tristana kind of just sat there and didn't really auto. Well, the trundle was just in there. Now, the trundle kind of disrespected. He could have flashed the bubble. He could have flashed the counter strike. He chose to not flash at all. He could have gotten out and the entire fight would have been avoided. But I don't know. I guess he's saving the, uh, the summoner spell till playoffs. He's pulling a double lift here. <laughs> so I, I don't know. That's just questionable. Then, yeah, because you could see he was positioned to actually teleport. He was just sitting in that bush right where Gragas is doing Krugs. He was just sitting there for the longest time while Tolerable was getting the the stick and the, the I mean, what whatever, arcane spell flux overload and shots from a sniper, bolt caliber, action rifle, and then, of course, the tidal wave as well. And Tolerable just sat there being CC locked for days. And the rest of his team, I just don't think they knew what to do in that situation. They probably just overestimated how much Tolerable was going to be able to take since he is going more of the tanky side with that Cinder Hulk build and he's looking for a Dead Man's Plate or a Randuin's Omen. But they just... If, if they leave him to die, they should just leave him to die. They should just bolt and say, okay, whoops, we messed up. Tolerable's dead. We're just going to reset. But instead, they were hesitant. They did not make a clear decision. Vicro just sat bot lane doing nothing, really. And then the rest of the team on the Chosen Five died for nothing. And we have I to point know, out, it was supposed to, it's supposed to be a team fight comp. They went one by one by one. This does know. not I... work to the way they drafted. My biggest issue was the Tristana just sitting there. I guess she has to be in melee range to auto hmm. because she was in range for the entire fight. The Rise was right in front of her and so was the Caitlyn and she chose just to sat there. And you see Demon go in. He's like, all right, we can still salvage this. The Orin can still TP in and we got Kiki, uh, yeah, Kiwi Slap on the way. Like just auto. You have so much damage. You were four and one at the time. And it it mind boggles me 
that the Tristana wouldn't just sit there and free hit. Because this comp is built around the Tristana free hitting everyone! And, oh, jeez. It's just... Oh, yikes. Thank God Kiwi Slap is just putting in work! <laughs> oh, Bye, Nami! Gets busted. Good tidal wave. You're gone. I don't know. Kiwi Slap is trying to put the team on his back right now. He is so fed, so strong. But the thing to notice on BHE, the rise is scaling. The Caitlyn now has two items, so she has the range, she has the crits. If I'm the Chosen Five, I'm a little worried, because unless you get the next team fight, you just completely allowed... Oh, jeez, BHE to get back into the game. Uh, just like right trying now. to flash over the wall. He's able to get over... Able to survive Kiwi Slap versus Jason, but backup coming in favor of BHE thus far. So Kiwi Slap backing out took way too much pain. Realm Warp gonna be used. And here we go. This is the engage coming out from BHE. Explosive cast pop, so is Carl the Forge God. Kiwi Slap gets a lot of damage and Squamp is gonna be the first to die. But Kiwi Slap gets the pop two for two thus far. JJ makes it the two for two tolerable. Wants to pick up the kill, able to tank up that damage. That's four dead on the side of BHE and the Chosen Five are looking good and what looked like an unfavorable fight. Yeah, no, Kiwi Slap is a god right now. He's sitting there like, hey, do damage to me if you can. I'm just going to kill your entire backline. What you going to do, you know? This Swain is a monster right now. And there is just nothing that BHE can do. Yes, the Caitlyn got to free hit a little bit, but she doesn't do enough damage unless she gets to her IE. She's not going to do anything. The Jax isn't damaged, though right now he's building Trinity Force, which to me makes no sense. You're so behind in comparison to the Trundle. Just build tank. And if you were going to build Trinity Force, build it before you get your freaking Cinder Hulk. That Cinder Hulk, yes, it gives you HP. Yes, it gives you a little bit of magic damage. But if you want to go damage, get damage before you go tank. Like, that one's a no-brainer there, Guam, come on, buddy. Oof. It's just a yikes right now. This is not looking good for BHE. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're in a situation where you're behind, and when you're behind, you absolutely need to go for the more cost-efficient build. It's tank build. He's not doing that. It's absolutely hurting him at the moment. But looking at the overall picture thus far, so far the Chosen Five have been pretty hot when it comes to taking those team fights. BHE are really relying on a very niche condition that the fight splits out and they're able to delay this game more and more towards that 35 minute mark where you get those massive power spikes that they really really need only thing is it's just so far in the chosen five's favor that it's hard for them to really make that late game fantasy come true the only person right now on the side of BHE that is even remotely relevant is the Rise. And you see that damage, 574 damage on to Tolerable. The Rise is really strong. He has two pen. He has the tier done. He has Morello. The Rise is in a good spot. Jason is in a spot to carry. Now we just need to get the Caitlyn to her third item. Get her to that IE to where her crits are now doing 150% more damage than they were before, plus the crit, uh, the uh, true damage off of IE. So unless they can get that Caitlyn to a point where she can just free hit, I don't know if BHE can win this. And especially with the Jax going Trinity Force right now, it's just not looking good. But, oh, Jax. This is a scary fight here because Kiwi Slap is not there. So, BHE do have a little bit of priority in this fight. And they're looking to try and abuse that as they set up towards this top tower. A fight looks very, very intimate at the moment. As this tower gets lower and lower, but there are no minions to continue that push. Kiwi still has teleport, though. So, a fight can break out. And they can 100% win this. They do have the double teleport ready for the side of the Chosen Five. So, uh, I think a team fight's gonna break out, or they're just gonna concede the tower. One of the two is gonna happen here. Yeah, that's a tower conceded, and that will be the final outer tower of this game. Kiwi Slap, meanwhile, getting into it with Zach. Demonic Assumption will be popped. 
and he's blown away by the explosive cast, but backup is here. Jason gonna choose to try and pursue this one. Teleport is starting to be channeled, but there we go. Jason is getting attacked. Kiwi Slap pushing forward, able to get the never move, but no, drops to Jason in the process. A very crucial kill there. Here comes Vicro. They want to take down JJ. JJ takes a lot of damage. He is gonna survive thus far. Backup is here, and we see Jason finally go down. Adjustment is here. This is the carry that they need to win this team fight. Squamp picks up one kill but loses his life immediately after JJ trying to be that back line. Trying to get in as much damage as he possibly can. Demon goes in but he has no backup. Vicro pushes forward. You can't fight this one by one by one. It needs to be a team fight. Otherwise we get this result which is BHE coming out ahead. But still Adjust though. Oh gosh this isn't over yet. Yeah still though pushing forward. And finally does come to an end. A very scary situation there for TCF. This is completely on adjustment. Adjustment is not getting his autos in. He's sitting there allowing his team to go in one at a time when he has all the space in the world to auto. You're at that three item mark on Tristana. You're level 14. Your range is higher than Caitlyn's, but Caitlyn is still getting more autos in than you. And she doesn't even have a front line. She has a Gragas. You have Orin, Trundle, Swain, and Leona in front of you. There is no excuse for Adjustment to not be getting in there and doing the damage. Yes, she blew up Jason with, you know, an E auto auto. And that just completely ended Jason's day. But Swamp, sh Swamp, Swamp, was able to get in there, kill the Trundle, get out. Caitlyn, able to free hit. Gragas, able to do what he wants. So right now, this is just becoming an issue, but we do see Baron started up for the Chosen Five, and BHE has really no idea. They have no wards. Yeah, this Baron already at half health. We're seeing the teleport come out from Zack as he heads towards that top side. Baron running critically low, only about 1,500 health left. Will they find it? Almost gets oh the steal tied away, goes out. That's adjustment down. That's a huge team fight player down, but still one remains in Kiwi Slap. All by his lonesome, they drop. The Zack in the process. Viker running away from this one. Ace in the hole goes out, but Jason's able to finish the job. Kiwi Slap takes down JJ. Squam playing forward. Taller ball over the wall, having a flash over. Trying to defend his mid lane carry. Jason on the run. Never move. Not going to land, but Jason, you're a little bit too far forward, friend. They're able to take down Kiwi Jason Slap, don't though. Care. Jason going to turn this around. Gets the double kill. Demon trying to run away. Flashes over the wall. Squam just going to Goomba stomp over. Follow up. Find the kill. That's an A picked up by BHE oh my goodness that fight went from bad to worse adjustment gets caught out that is the worst thing to happen for the side of the chosen five adjustment is all the damage that you have minus kiwi slap but after demonic ascension kiwi slap doesn't have that much damage and Jason He's just so strong right now. Those shields are ridiculous, and he lives throughout the entire fight. Completely blows up Kiwi Slap. Says, you know what? I don't care that you're 7 3 10. I'm a rise. I'm not balanced. I'm just going to blow you up. I'm at three and a half items. Almost at his death cap now. The moment he gets death cap, he's just going to out damage everyone on the side of the Chosen Five. Yeah, and that is the player to watch, especially if you're the Chosen Five. He is the target, the priority. Really, we haven't seen JJ really turn on, and that is the Caitlyn, mind you. That is the name the Caitlyn requested to be called by. Just in case they were a little bit lost there, but yeah. JJ has yet to really turn on this fight thus far. So Jason has to be a priority. You do have the tools to get to them, both the Solar Flare, the Pillar, Call, the Forge God. If you can blow them up fast enough, that is their main source of damage gone. But if they don't, we see a result of what happened at that Baron. I don't know. If you blow up JJ, it doesn't really matter as long as the Rise is still there. And even at that point, if you do blow up the Rise, the Caitlyn still does a substantial amount of damage. She is at three and a half items. She's working on the Mortal Reminder, and if she gets to that, she just out damages everyone on BHE, even the Tristana. Because the Tristana right now is either getting blown up or is just not autoing. So this Caitlyn JJ is just allowed to free hit, and no one can really get to him. So he's in that perfect situation. 
Because right now, the front line for BHE is starting to come online. The Gragas is at three items. The Jax is about to hit three items. He's going for the Randuin's Omen to protect the Caitlyn. If anyone walks forward, they get slowed. And the Jax can just sit there and protect. But we do see Zach getting caught out. It's supposed to cast. That is pretty That's crucial. A... The cooldown's not as high due to the fact that we are at that point where it is level three, but still a crucial cooldown down when it comes for the team fight. Mm, that's going to be a pause. Demon, uh, bit of a technical glitch. The uh, hamster, one of them died in the uh, in the wheel powering his PC. It's an unfortunate event. This is why I say ferrets over hamsters every day. <laughs> But yeah, looking at this game overall so far, TCF looked like they were in the driver's seat. They had the team fight composition, and they made a few mishaps where it just came down to not team fighting the way your comp should be team fighting. Then BHE are starting to get to that point where they're turning online, all carried off the back of Jason thus far. And we said it before, if TCF want to find a way back into this game, it starts by taking out Jason. Well, BHE is just playing the fights perfectly. They're playing a front to back. If you look at Jason, his target selection is just beautiful. He sees that Kiwi Slap is out of Demonic Ascension, goes straight for him, says, Grog or says Orin, I don't really care about you. Leona, what are you going to do? Damage? Pfft, I wish. And just completely blows up Kiwi Slap. If anyone steps out of position, Jason immediately goes for them. And that's the difference right now between BHE's team fight. And TCF's team fight. TCF wants to go in, and they want to just blow up the back line and then worry about everyone else. And that's kind of what Adjustment's doing. He's sitting back, waiting till he can just two-shot JJ or two-shot Jason. When in reality, Tristana excels at destroying the front line. So if Adjustment can start to get those free hits onto the Gragas, onto Jax, onto the Nami and then worry about Jason when he steps out of position to go hit Kiwi Slap, that might be the difference. But right now, BHE is just team fighting way, 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 like exponentially better than TCF right now. But we do see Call of the Forge God. Yeah, Call of the Forge God pop. They're gonna pull in Squamp, who has to use his Counter-Strike. There we go again. Another use of the Never Move of flashing out. Will be burned. Kiwi Slap is gonna start to back off of this one. Teleport goes out, Jason. Able to find Kiwi Slap. Kiwi Slap going golden to stay alive. Longer, but the bubble comes in absolutely flush. And they manage to pick up a kill, but they lose a tower on that top side for it. I don't know. Kiwi Slap is acting like Demonic Ascension isn't that big of a cooldown. Demonic Ascension is everything for Swain. Swain needs to go in there, absorb all of this damage, heal everything, Zhonya's, and then come out once he has five uh, soul fragments and just blow everyone up. But for right now, Kiwi has just been getting caught and dying and not doing the damage that he needs to do. And the Caitlyn's just allowed to free hit, Jason's allowed to do whatever he wants, and Kiwi is just going to die over and over again at this point. Yeah, but you also have to look at the total picture of this entire thing. It, it was Kiwi Slap going aggressive. He got two flashes out of it, and they took a top tower for it. So overall, this is still a net gain for TCF. This wasn't just Kiwi Slap dying for nothing. You are right. TCF is still pushing their advantages. They do excel in a split push with the Tristana because the Tristana just burns towers down. And that's exactly what they did. But right now, this is a really bad position for TCF. They're starting to push the bot lane, but I no don't minions. know you're going to outpush BHE right now. This is a very, very interesting situation here. They really need the wave clear to come out from Kiwi Slap. If they're going to make this work, out goes Call of the Forge God. But Inhibitor Tower is already down. Caught out is Vicro. Counter Strike 
Not going to stun him in time. He is going to be able to walk away from that one, but inhibitor in the mid lane going to go down. If we check at the bot lane, we see that TCF is able to claim an inhibitor. They're actually pushing forward. They're going to look to close the game right now, and only one recall is going to get through. That's going to be Zach. Towers are falling on the bot side. Adjustment wants to push forward, but Jason actually made his recall go through as well. He's going to get there in time, and that was a trade of inhibitors as well as the Nexus Tower over the wall. Adjustment able to use the blast bot, but a fly Flash forward coming out from Jason. He's cornered. He's in a terrible situation. Squab takes out adjustment. And what an interesting little turn of events we have, Sordo. BHE just might run it down mid here. They can end the game. Wait, no. hold up. Is this actually happening? This feels no. like a TSM game I'm watching right now. No, 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 no. Even though adjustment's down, Kiwi Slap is still there. He still has his hourglass. He still has demonic assumption. This is going to be a very tricky siege to pull off if they want to find the end call the forge god is up but bg is in a position forward out goes call the forge god it lands onto three they get swamp at the price of nothing thus far and now jace has gone up and he's destroyed they're gonna find jj as well out goes the never moved lands flush burns time is nigh as he drops four for nothing picked up and that is a huge misplay to come out of bhe um excuse me jack Zach, you have teleport! You have explosive catch, you have everything! I don't understand! That was just a complete misplay by BHE, you had the game won! No! But Zach no, just decided not to teleport in! No, I don't even agree caught. with that! It was not one. There were four members up, and one of them is their strongest one, Kiwi Slap. It was a bad choice to go, even if you have the teleport. That's two towers you're fighting, plus four members, and one of them being the strongest on the team. And they're gonna concede Baron for oh my goodness. T TCF just got given the biggest get out of jail free card they have ever got it. Because that was a complete misplay, and this completely shifts the game in their favor. They now have momentum, and Elder Drake is spawning as well, and they have Infernal. So this Elder Drake is hella important. Yeah, and that is the upgraded Infinity Edge coming out of Adjustment, thanks to that Orn. Usually oh, you save that for last, but because of the Quicksilver Sash, I feel like it's the quickest way to get damage in by spending gold on that. But we are going to get a fight breakout. Zack is the one cut out. Zack is the one to explode first. Call the Forge God. They're going to find it onto JJ. JJ absolutely annihilated. So is Burn trying to step his way out of this. It's not going to work out. They give over. No, the oh steal coming out from Jason over the wall. Finds the Elder Drake. But this might be far too little to make it actually work out. Now, Squamp, Vicro fighting it out. Knocked up. Squamp using the ward to be able to get out. That is a Baron buffed minion wave running into these towers tcf are looking to end this one right here right now jason goes down and that is your final hope of taking this game over the nexus in the sights of the chosen few and they're gonna find this victory over bhe oh my goodness just misplay after misplay after misplay and it was just a domino effect all the way down to the demise of BHE and the Chosen Five. They just played that so well. They, oh my goodness. And they're just going to try to catapult themselves into second place. And for BHE, uh, isn't it uh, SPK got a free win today? So right yeah. now, they're still fighting for that playoff spot. So if BHE wants to make it into playoffs, they need to clean up this play because those mistakes are just not acceptable right now. Absolutely not. Really, it was just both teams trying to capitalize on each other's mistakes. We saw earlier TCF were in the driver's seat quite early, then they did one by one. Then BHE in the driver's seat, little mistakes here and there. They try to go for an end at some point. TCF able to take the advantage off of that. Ultimately... Both of these teams have a lot they need to clean up, though. Yeah, no. TCF, they did get a lead early, and then they threw it towards that middle part of the game. So if they're going to take anything away from this, that needs to be cleaned up. As well as, for adjustment, the spacing between you know the team fights needs to be worked on. And Kiwi Slap just went in and just popped off. I, I can't say anything else with Kiwi Slap.
just put the team on his back, took all the damage, Zanya's healed it all back, and then still managed to blow up JJ and Jason. So, excellent job on Kiwi. But for BHE, they have a lot to look at this game. They did come back into the game, but still managed to throw it at the Elder Drake. Yes, they did get it with the Miraculous Q by Jason, but at that point, it's too little too late. Your damage dealer and Caitlyn, who finally hit, you know, those four-item power spike. She hit the IE, RFC, Stormraiser, and then one more item. She went the uh, Mortal Reminder. Once she's gone, you don't really have that much of, you know, reliable damage. Yes, you do have Jason there, but at the end of the day, I'll take range over complete blowups any day of the week. And on that note, congratulations to TCF for their victory. But when you move on to the next game, we are going to cut to a short break as we set up for that. Stay tuned. More Elder League actions from Ascension Esports coming right at you.
ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Elder League Ascension Esports. We're getting into this matchup between SPK Crimson and the Blaze Banditos. No Rafa this time, just me, Deserux, and Sordo as we head straight into Champion Select. I miss Rafa. He's, he's my friend. I miss him. But we do get into picks and bans. I see Fizz. And I get so happy seeing him banned. I hate that champion in my game. I hate seeing him anywhere in League of Legends. You know, one of the top two champions asked by the community if you want removed, him and Zoe, they were like, yeah, get him out. We don't want him here anymore. So we do see him banned. I like the Pike ban as well. Pike, you know, he's still a really, really, really strong support champion. His execute is just ridiculous, and it's like a Darius stun that just resets over and over and over and over and over again, and it gives your entire team kill gold as well. So I love to see that ban. And so far, we go with the first pick, going to be Braum. They're going with the support pick, which is a, quite a bit of an odd one. Usually, you want to go with the power pick right out the gates. But we do notice that on the red side, Blaze Banditos have chosen to ban the Morgana first. It's usually... It's usually something you quite often see banned on the blue side due to the fact that you don't want that in the first rotation of picks coming from the red side. But still following through with it, Sejuani going to be picked up. We're going to see what they go with next. That's interesting to pick up the Sejuani after you see the Braum picked up. Because Braum can just jump in front of the AD carry, jump in front of anyone, and put up Unbreakable. Yes, he does get stunned, but I'd much rather have a stunned Braum than, you know, a stunned AD carry or a stunned mid laner. So that's a little questionable for the side of uh, Blaze Banditos, but we do see that Jace picked up. Whoo, that's some, uh, that's a spicy pick right there. I'm not going to lie to you. You are not going to lie. Jace being picked up towards the top side could be towards the bot side, maybe even towards the mid. It is a little bit of a flex pick, but tends to be on the top, which does open up some opportunities for a counter pick. Next two picks going to go over to the side of SPK Crimson. They choose to go with the Trundle. They're really building this team comp quite well early. Yeah, I'm really liking that Trundle pick. You can steal so much stats off of the Sejuani. Yes, the Subject Gate did get nerfed. Yes, his Q did get nerfed. But he still does excel greatly against tanks. And if they do lock in this Jinx, I'm already liking the team comp a lot better for the side of SPK. And they do lock it in. So, right now, from what it looks like, SPK just wants to scale. Because the moment they hit, you know, three, four items, the Jinx just pops off. So, this is a little questionable for the side of Blaze Banditos. They need to round out their comp really well and they need a strong bot lane and that nami could be a key to that strong bot lane yeah and very wise to choose the nami as the last part of this rotation because you need to save the counter picks you do get priority towards the latter half of the second phase of drafting but we are getting into the bands now mid lane yet to be picked up on the side of spk crimson as well as potentially Blaze Mandito, so we should see a lot of attack towards those champ pools. Yeah, Zed getting banned, Lucian banned. I like the Lucian ban because he does, you know, hurt into the Jinx. Any early game champion against Jinx just sucks. Jinx wants to get to, you know, Storm Razor, Hurricane, IE, and just, you know, pop off from there. So champions like Lucian who excel at the one to two item spike and will just completely smash a Jinx are just good bans in general. Same thing with Jin. Jin with, you know, the new Halo Blades build, where you're going into Storm Razor and uh, RFC, scales a lot sooner than a Jinx. Now, something that, that surprises me is that Akali was left open through the first draft phase and was just banned now. So that's a little questionable. One of the teams should have probably looked to pick her up because she still is one of, if not the strongest mid laners in the game. So a little questionable on both sides. So we are going to go with potentially a Galio lock-in, SPK, Invasive, holding on to that pick. Mm. And now this last pick, 
Galio can be a mid lane pick. It usually is. There is potential for top lane. This last pick should show it, but this does give a counter pick over on the side of the Blaze Banditos. And it should be an ADC counter pick, which sounds absolutely absurd to say. Really, I feel like they should have saved the Echo for that pick. Yeah, I would have definitely saved either the top or mid lane for the side of Banditos. Because there aren't really many ADC... Um, hello? If that is ears locked in, I have a lot of questions. But I'm just going to ignore it for now. <laughs> there aren't many ADCs that can be picked into the Jinx. You know, Caitlyn is one of them. MF is kind of one of them. But, you know... I'm just I'm just gonna shush and wait until the Azir is locked in. There it is, Vayne. That's uh, I I have a lot of questions, but uh, I'll, I'll let you speak about what you think. That's okay. right. That's yeah, all. this is quite a trip to go for. I want to see if any of these are placeholders. Overall, the draft on the side of Blaze Banditos has been something that's that feels more haphazard and solo QS, which does give it the potential to work out of pure comfort alone, but there's a lot of organized chaos going over to the side of SPK Crimson, who have a composition that just works well and melds well as a team. Yeah, with Banditos, they they do look like a solo queue team, where it's like, Sejuani was just like, alright, I guess we need a tank, I'll play Sejuani. Excuse me, I'll play Sejuani, though the Sejuani was first pick. But, it is interesting because Banditos only really have the Sejuani. A lot of their team comp is damage. You have the Vayne, who's a late, scale, uh, late game scaling carry. You have the Echo, who can blow up anyone. And then you have Jace as well. So I, I don't know how I feel about Banditos right now. If they can get ahead, they're going to snowball and just completely smash anyone. There's no turning back. Even if they throw once, they'll still come back and smash you. It really does not matter. But for the side of Crimson, they're just waiting till late game. You pick the Galio to just wave clear roam, wave clear roam, and just protect the Jinx. Yes, you do a bit of AP damage, but you're not going to do as much as an Echo. You're not going to do as much as, you know, other AP carries that are in the mid lane right now. Orianna, Ari, Rise. Even if you would have thrown a cannon in the mid lane, you know, it would have been a different story. But right now, for uh spk crimson they're just looking to peel that jinx they have complete confidence in her that she can just 1v9 carry the game so we're gonna have to see how that comes into fruition and i think a lot of it starts in the jungle well that's where it starts off with any matchup really right from the get-go it's the jungler's responsibility to influence those very crucial early i want to say five minutes of the game whether it be setting up tower dives or just you know outright going for ganks um when it comes down to it you do have to give a little bit of priority over to mickey does little because of the nature of Sej the way sejuani works she can have much more successful ganks and even burning a flash she can be able to follow it up much better than a trundle can but can't underestimate the pillar overall it's looking to be a hot matchup. I'm really curious at this comfort versus organized team fighting, which is actually going to tr turn out to win this overall. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to agree with you there. The Sejuani ganks are just deadly, especially once you hit six. You do hit the uh, Glacial Prison, and you just stun with Permafrost. There's just so much CC that happens, and especially if you decide to gank the Jace, who can go melee and help you proc your Permafrost faster. It's just a deadly combination up there. But I'm curious to see where Mickey Does Little decides to go this game. Because he can go into the bot lane and try to get the vein ahead. He could go mid, which I feel is still his best option, especially versus a Galio, who the only thing he really has is his taunt. Because his, hero, uh, his E does collide with champions. And if they can position themselves in such a way, the Galio, his only option is to flash. So I do give the advantage over to the Sejuani. But if the game does last, you know, 30, 40 minutes, I'm going to have to give it over to SPK as long as the Jinx stays alive. The moment the Jinx dies, the whole game is completely and utterly over for SPK Crimson. 
Hey, you never know. With Jarvan builds nowadays, the Dunkmaster build is still very much a viable thing. Going with the early Dusk Blade, looking to just pump out damage, flag and drag into Cataclysm. It could do enough to annihilate either the Echo or the Vein. So you can't undermine the rest of the team comp. There is damage there, and tanks nowadays, they do like to scrap, so... There is a lot of emphasis on protecting Invasive, of course, but he's not their only hope. He's just the strongest they have. You're not wrong, but I feel the J4 will be going tank. He did take Grasp of the Undying with Inspiration secondary, so I feel he's just looking to survive lane. If he wanted to go damage, I feel like he would have gone uh, Domination Sorcery. Just tried to get Scorch, Electrocute, everything just to burst. So I feel his build will probably revolve around Titanic Hydra, Black Cleaver, Full Tank. Because when you see Jarvan top, that's usually the build that they tend to go for. So, yes, the Jarvan will do damage. And if he does decide to build full damage, then by all means, like, I'm curious to see how it'll go. But I do expect he will be building tank with the Trundle as well. The Trundle might be the only one that I could foresee going a little bit of damage. He could do the Trinity Force build into Cinder Hulk or the Cinder Hulk into Bork build, any combination of the two, just to try to help the Jinx do a bit more damage, especially with that beefy front line that uh, Banditos have with the Sejuani. So Bork does very well into that with the Trundle as well as the Subjugate. So I'm curious to see how people will build, but I definitely think the J4 should be building tank with the stone plate, just getting in there, disrupting the back line, and letting the Jinx just front to back the fight. So we're going to have to see how the game goes, because it's still a completely toxic matchup top lane. J4 versus uh, Jace. Jace pokes, then J4 goes all in, and then Jace, you know, bats him back and pokes. It's just a back and forth matchup, and it really does depend which jungler decides to put pressure into the lane first. So when it comes down to this matchup thus far, both of these teams are actually tied in the standings. As it is at the moment, both four, six apiece tied for that sixth place spot. Whoever gets this gets prime priority of that spot. Only time will tell who takes that. These teams have gone against each other in the past, and it was SPK who came out ahead. We're going to see if Banditos can get the redemption or if Eskite is just the better team. I mean, you can't underestimate. Playoffs is just around the corner. If you include this game, you have seven games left in the season. So every single game at this point matters, especially if you're tied and looking for that sixth place spot. So we're going to have to see. But I think... If the cards come out correctly, and you know, the tarot card readings that I have on my desk for see the future, I should see SPK pulling out the victory here. But only time will tell, you are right on that. Yeah, so one thing about this bot side is it has a lot of weaknesses versus strengths for both of them. Really, Vayne tends to be the weaker champion, tends to be one of the most bully champions when it comes to early, early game matchups. And you also have the Braum as well, which being a melee into a range support can hurt because it gives the Cool Crab a lot of opportunities to just get in a lot of free poke onto Spartans. It's going to be interesting to see the way this does play out in the long run. Yeah, no. Both lanes really do just want to farm, so it's just up to the supports to make the ADC's lives just a living hell. The Nami ebbs and flows, but we do see a gank mid lane already. Yeah, Zadaya has to run away. Instead, starts to go back in because T-minus is around the corner to bring some backup. Feels okay knowing he has the support of his jungler who is invading. Going towards that red side. We're going to see them meet right now. T-minus. Mickey does little. Fighting it out. The stun. One more auto away. That's why T-minus backs off. But a bubble. Going to land flush onto evasive. Out goes the flash as well as the ignite. A lot of damage onto him. They pop all his summoner spells. But Zadaya in a bad situation. Gets stunned up. T-minus is here. But he has no health to bring any backup. Oh and that's goodness. first blood going over to Hackney. 
Yeah, this is what I talked about earlier. Galio's E does collide with champions. And then, just to add salt into the wounds, he ends up failing the flash over the wall. The Echo picks up the clean kill. And that's just going to be the end for the Galio right then and there. So now it's just Ken Zendaya, I guess that's the name. Zendaya. Can he clear waves over and over and over again? Because that's really all he's looking for. He will not win the fight 1v1 against the Galio. But we do see T minus here. Flag and drag gonna land Coach Bandito in a world of hurt. Tries to return damage, but you don't have enough resources to do so as Nub Poopfa picks up a kill. Questionable flash there, but, you know, great gank on the side of T minus. He gets there just in time as the minion wave is building. And Noob Poop, what name? The J4 doesn't lose any farm out of that entire ordeal. He gets the kill, gets the farm, and now up 12 CS to the Jace. This is just his dream situation. It's but a little bit dangerous. Very dangerous if you're invasive. You have to realize both summoner spells are down. So you're playing with fire. If that bubble comes out and a condemn can follow up, that's pretty much a kill. Yeah. The Vayne, you know, we consider her a late game champion, but if she's able to get, you know, four, five, six autos, that's an entire health bar, especially with her W passive. It's a lot of damage that a lot of people don't expect. So we do have to pay attention to it, and we do have to see if Invasive does take bad fights here. Speaking of fights, one breaking out towards the river, backup coming from the bot side of SBK Crimson. But nothing gonna come just yet. It was a little bit of a skirmish over that Scuttle Crab, and you know it's because they want that oh so juicy Infernal Drake. Yeah, right now, for the bot lane of SPK, they just have the advantage right now. The Jinx does push into the vein, and Nami isn't zoning as well as she could be. So the Jinx is just able to push in under tower, and they'll just have lane priority for probably, if not most, like, most of the matchup, probably. That'd be the best. Like a lot of stalling going in the bot side, but towards the mid lane, Zadaya, a very terrible spot, gets stunned up by the parallel convergence, takes shot after shot, but he is at a very tanky state. Still though, Hackney gonna go for the dive. He oh, doesn't he have power. enough mana. He does not enough mana to use the ultimate. But meanwhile, on the top side, Zub Poopfa, Nub Poopfa, able to pick up another kill. Mickey does a little, has shown up. Not gonna go for anything there, but SBK Crimson able to pick up two kills in different lanes and make it work out quite well, but the fight's not gonna be over. Because pushing forward is Civil with the jungler, T minus, able to show up in time. Civil tries to make a one for one exchange happen. Not gonna work out. T minus picks up one kill. Looking to grab that sushi and try and make it two. Out goes the hero's entrance. And here is Zadaya, but down goes T minus in a very unsuccessful tower dive. Huh. Um, I don't really have words for that one. That was just completely a misplay. Miscalculation on the side of Team Minus. Great bubble hit by the Cool Crab. Gets the Ignite off. Does everything that he has to do. So, you know, great plays all around by SPK. They do catch, you know, uh, Hackney out of position. Because he did tower dive without enough mana. Hits the tower as well, which, as a tilter, and that's something that probably should never happen, but it does, Hanky dies, and then J4 just completely and utterly smashes Bandito. And you have to wonder about the decision making there. When you see T- pushing forward, it's a support. He's towards the tower already, you're not gonna kill him, Hero's entrance is not in a prime spot. For it to be effective whatsoever, Infernal Drake is on the board. That should be your priority, not the support kill, but that is in the past. Now we're looking at the present 
as more fights over Scuttle Crab tend to come up, and this is going to spark a fight, an engagement onto T minus. One more auto will get that permafrost, gets the stun. Parallel Converge is going to go out. Hackney looking to try and find some kills. It's four versus two thus far. SBK throwing out those chompers to try and get his team back into this. Zadaya on the run is going to drop to Hackney Invasive, has no choice but to run away, forfeiting priority towards this Infernal and the Scuttle Crab. Yeah, there were just four people there. For the side of Banditos, they were in such good position just to rotate over. The Echo is really strong right now versus the Yalium. So the Echo is going to have priority. And that's what completely made the difference. The Jinx was forced to go around the other way. The Braum was already in the middle of the fight with T minus. And that's and just going to be Infernal Drake in over. The world is T minus doing flashes over the wall. Took a lot of damage. Did not need to use that flash. You just don't go for that. But yeah. still, though, Civil chooses to use the ultimate, going very hard onto Evasive. Parallel Convergence gets the stun. They're going to kill, make it two, taking out the bot lane of SBK Crimson. But Cataclysm Spark. over in the top side. Nub Poopfa running away from this one because he did burn the flash of Crash Bandito. Coach Bandito, mind you. Isn't going to find the kill, though. Yeah, no, Spartans just completely missed his Glacial Fisher. Echo's going in mid. Hello? Yeah, they're all over the place right now. Blaze Banditos are hungry. They want more kills, though. It is Zadaya that is a very tanky Galio to try and take down. Don't make that mistake again, Hackney. And he backs off, and rightfully so. You do not want to chance that Chrono Break. Yeah, let's let's not make the same mistake twice because um that would be really unfortunate. You are three and one, you do have shutdown gold on you, and it's a lot of it. It'd probably be around five hundred shutdown gold. So you're better off just backing off, calling it even. You're still ahead in kills, though you're down a little bit in CS, and just keep applying pressure all over the map. That's But instead, Zadaya's still going to push forward. T-minus is here to provide some backup, so Zadaya not in a terrible situation just yet. Let's see that SBK Crimson were in the driver's seat early on in this game, but Blaze Banditos, they're just so proactive on this map, running from lane to lane, making play to play happen. Meanwhile, Coach Bandito fighting it out on the top side, and there we go again. Nubpufa, got to be careful with that one. You can't underestimate the damage of Jace. I know Nub Pufa is completely in control of top lane right now, which is very surprising because Jay should be able to poke out, excuse me, the J4. As we see the main tumble in, hello? Invasive just eating that damage, acting like it's nothing. Yeah, that but, is a uh, Silver Bolt Max, which... Those autos can line up, and here comes the heroic entrance. Gonna knock up Coach Bandito and absolutely take him down. But Glacial Fisher going out, Civil going a little bit too far forward. Has to be careful with positioning his son from those concussive blows. Can and look at that Glacial Fisher, Glacial Prison, mind you, lands flush as Civil's able to pick up a double kill. Yeah, no, this is just complete and utter domination by the side of Bandito's. They're making proactive plays. They're pushing their advantages, which they know they have. Echo coming down. Or, sorry, the, the Vayne ends up picking up kills. This is just all going well for the side of Banditos. They're letting their late-game scaling champions get to their late-game items, even though we're only 12 minutes into the game. Yeah, and this is hurting very much, especially for Invasive. He's the one who needs to turn on for his team to have any noticeable effect in this matchup. And it's just not happening because Civil is turning on well before that thanks to those proactive plays. And really thanks to just how active, how hyperactive Mickey Does Little has been on this map. Having participated in five out of seven of the kills, you really have to watch out for this guy. Yeah, Mickey is not doing a little. He is doing a lot right now. He is basically just doing everything for the side of banditos he is putting the win on a silver platter right now he's like here let me just spoon feed my carries kills and at this point banditos is kind of giving top lane the direst treatment where it's like yeah you're just you're kind of existing up there 
You're kind of death fodder, but oh, the trundle pillar? Yeah, beautiful pillar denies the use of that hex deck, but it is an echo. That's not someone that's exactly easy to catch out. Having so many tools like the dash, a blink, as well as parallel convergence. Even flash being up very soon, but tidal wave going out, fight breaking out towards this mid of the river on the top side. And Civil able to get Scuttle Crab as well as picking up T minus. And SPK are just are just crumbling at this point. Blaze Banditos are really starting to turn on, and it's off the back of Civil. Yeah, no, Civil right now is just doing so much. Six out of the eight kill participation done. Four out of the eight kills are on to him. So right now, Civil is in a prime position just to carry this game home. Vayne is someone that you really don't want to allow to get her items. And right now, it's Bork versus BF Sword or Storm Razor at this point for the Jinx. So as long as the Vayne can continue to farm, she's going to hit those three items way before Jinx will be able to hit her power spike. And I mean, when we talk about it, when it comes down to spikes, if you're not going for that Infinity Edge build, if you go for the Bork first, you're turning on much, much sooner. And we're seeing that already with the Silver Bolt Max, which is something that's actually pretty rare out of Vayne users. Typically, you go for the Q Max just to get that extra AD. And it's working well for him. He's going for the attack speed, and Napufa, meanwhile, is going to get a great big taste of how powerful Civil is at the moment. Going for the chase on the hunt of Napufa, who's got one auto, two autos, make it three. A lot of damage on there. Condemn knocking him into the wall, but he is going to be able to escape. Uh, flag and drag very lucky he gets over that wall. yeah but ever so unlucky as well out goes the stun no he goes for the ultimate instead mickey wants to finish off this kill but the grand hero's entrance is gonna make it work out for him as he's able to escape instead getting stunned up zadaya tied away not gonna land forces the flash out though mickey does little able to pick up the scraps and now priority on this mid lane tower the jewel of the rift going down in favor of blaze banditos again a lot of this relies on mickey mickey is the engage for the team does pick up rift Hail. is she summoning it no yep and that's gonna be rift Hail down mid now here comes the fight glacial fisher gets a lot done as well as the flag and drag and look at invasive turn on so many low health bars he's looking to clean up this fight concussive blows out goes the stun and coach bandito wants to try and find some redemption but invasive is on fire right now he's finding more and more and here comes the ace here comes spk grinsom this is what i was talking about earlier the jinx was just allowed to free hit in the back acting like nothing was really happening to her. Because in reality, nothing was happening to her. The Echo could not get on to Jinx. And at this point in the game, yes, J4 does a lot of damage. He's sitting at 4, 1, and 4. But if Jinx is just allowed to free hit and get her passive, hey, let's get crazy, boys. I'm crazy. I have a doctor's note. And the doctor says, let's just kill everyone. Oh my goodness. Yeah, really a big problem coming out from that overstay from Blaze Banditos. They wanted that tower, didn't work out too well. Now we're seeing the rotations come out of SBK Crimson as they try and transfer that ace into more gold, into more objectives. They're going to find another tower on the top side. We're going to see if Blaze Banditos want a piece of this. Just looking to bully them off, but SBK are looking to get the reset and eventually cash in on all those kills they just received. But Cool Crab goes for the tidal wave, doesn't find anything with it. And yeah, that's the reset that's going to come through for SPK. Now, the thing is, the Vayne is still up, you know, 400 gold. But the Jinx right now, in her pocket, is sitting on 2,300 gold. That is going to be a huge power spike for her. And just make it so that she just does more damage than she was in that last fight. And if she can get to that Hurricane in her build... She's just going to pop off and make it so that no one on the side of Banditos is safe. Yeah, so now setting up towards his top side, we do see the recall come out from Evasive. Was able to pick up almost a completed Zill item from the gold obtained from that last fight. 
And once that Zillow item is finished, that means you max out the passive of your Storm Razor, followed up with Infinity Edge. A lot of damage waiting to happen, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Jinx is a really good champion once you start to hit that power spike. Because Storm Razor does apply on all parts of the Hurricane. And then once you get IE with that as well, all the crits that you do, do apply on the Hurricane Bolts as well. So, Jinx, she has the perfect frontline in front of her to just stay in her rocket form and just blast anyone who steps up way too far. Yeah, not a fun day if you're dealing with this Jinx, but still, cannot undermine Civil. He has been doing quite well in this game thus far. Still has more overall gold by 600 ahead of Invasive. It's just one fight once so far. Blaze Banditos can come back from this, and so far we've seen they do have pretty good rotations when it comes to pushing advantages. Yep, but for the side of SPK, oh. if they do manage to get a 5v5 team fight, this. I don't know if they can, you know, cl uh, be beat at that point. If they get the 5v5 team fight that they want. But if you look at last team fight, a lot of it was on the J4. He did hit the three-man knockup. He didn't have Cataclysm, but at that point, it didn't matter. His Glacial Fisher knocked them up into the flag and drag, and that was just the end of the fight. The Jinx just popped off from there. Yeah, but here we go. Fight breaking out. Invasive might be cut out. Civil's going hard for this one. Glacial Fisher going to go out, but down goes Invasive in such a quick fashion, followed up by Spartans going to drop as well. Behind the tower, Mickey does a little just there for motivational support. They're going to find this top tower. They're going to take it down as quickly as humanly possible. Zadaya, team minus. You might want to get out of dodge. Yeah, a bit too far by Invasive oh. and Spartans, but hello. Yeah, instead they're choosing to fight this. You don't know who you're fighting, friend, but maybe they do. They're able to find one or almost going to make it two thus far. Civil could not get the damage he needed, and instead the exchange going in favor of SBK in the post-fight sequence. Yeah, great hero's entrance coming out by Sin uh, the Galio. I'm not going to try to pronounce names. But the Trundle Pillar also coming out does slow oh, the Vayne's no. attack speed, but hello! We've seen this way too many times. T-minus getting too far forward. Civil smells blood, but doesn't want to chase because invasive. Spartans, they're on the way. He smells something could be around that corner, and there it comes. Yeah, but everyone's back. The Jinx does come back here. Uh -oh. She still doesn't have Hurricane, but... The winner's Bite does land. Civil's the one that's caught out, and we've gone full circle, Soto. First, it was Evasive, and after so much time, Evasive finds his way back up, claims Civil. Yep, just... These are the stereotypical overstays of this league. Everyone just wants to, you know, one more wave, one more wave, one more wave. Well, you know, after so many waves, people respawn and come back to your lane to kill you, so... It's not as free as one may think, but pings are going on to the Baron, and it's oh. going to be started off. This is a very interesting Baron call to come out. They do have the damage to take it down, but not in a timely manner. These Blaze Banditos are here to provide a little bit of a distraction. Zadaya moving forward. Out goes the Parallel Convergence. He does not find the stun with it, though. Zadaya on that front line, taking too much damage. Shadow Wave's going to go out. They're going to take down one tank. They still need to take out the second if they want to get too invasive. And invasive on the run. Knows his front line's down. Chooses not to pursue anymore because there's no defense to help you. Yeah, a bit of an uh, interesting Baron call. Kind of a throw there. But for the side of Banditos, they're going to start this. Oh, God. Is it going to come around full circle again? We're going to find out. There are five members up. Hackney, slightly low health. 7,000 health left on the Baron. Cool Crab, Coach, they're trying to play distraction here. Zoo, Nub Hoopa is here. He does have the Cataclysm up. Parallel Converge is going to go out. Finds the sun. On to T minus Invasive. Getting a lot of damage in. He's going to be able to Four find man. pick after pick. Invasive is making it work, but finally drops. Almost pulls off the hero play, gets shut down by Hackney. That was a four-man cataclysm. A bit of a misplay by Invasive got a bit too close to the Echo and the Sejuani. But that was an amazing fight and an amazing pick for SPK. They end up catching a very lucky break after their mistake prior 
to that Baron fight. So right now, if I'm SPK, I'm counting my lucky stars that they didn't just get Baron and turn that completely. Yeah, that shows you the power of Invasive, though. He's starting to build towards that Infinity Edge, doesn't have it yet. Once that Infinity Edge is built, that's a lot of threat that you have to deal with when dealing with Invasive. Meanwhile, Civil is going for that Phantom Dancer next, going for that very attack speed heavy build that Veins do like to go nowadays. So that's a lot of damage that can melt those tanks down in a quick fashion, even melt down Invasive. As long as he has the ultimate up, and here we're going to see that damage come to fruition as he looks to take down Spartan, unable to find the kill, instead sets his sights towards the Dia. So much CC, but it's not enough to stop the inevitable. Now Spartan's getting slowed by the Tide Caller's Blessing using the Glacial Fisher. Still, though, double kill picked up by Civil, and that is once again two members of that front line down. Can they do it again to stop this Baron? I don't know if they'll be able to. The zoning potential from the Jace is just a lot. And Vayne, she melts Baron, so I think this Baron goes over two Blaze Banditos. Now T-minus getting close, not close enough. Baron, Blaze Banditos, they're able to pick it up and get a nice juicy reset and potentially set up a power play instead. Civil and Hackney, Mickey does little. They're setting their sights towards that mid lane that they were unable to get earlier in the game. Finally able to claim it now with a gigantic way following through. Yeah, there's a lot of freestanding gold still out there for Banditos to claim. You still have the top T1, T2. You have bot T2, and you just took mid T2. So right now, it's all on Banditos to go get that free gold on the map. Yeah, not only just the free gold, but objectives as well, Dragon. Gonna fall in favor of Blaze Banditos, and at this stage of the game, that dragon is awfully useful. This is where rotational play comes in, and that movement speed will help out with those rotational plays. Yeah, especially when you have a Jace and an Echo who love to split push, and the Echo does have Sheen, so his damage to structures is a lot. When he phase dives forward and hits the tower, it's gonna do, you know, 500, 600, 700 damage. And that's the same as, you know, two, three Jinx autos at this point. So for the side of SPK, you really do have to manage your waves correctly. Because if you let Jace or you let Echo hit those towers, they're just going to explode. There's a nothing that can stop them if they start to hit that tower. Yeah, absolutely. But now, getting back into the look of this game thus far, Blaze Banditos are finally picking up that outer tower, the last outer tower. They have the inners to deal with next. Two inners left, but bad positioning out of SBK. They're kind of giving up priority towards the mid lane. Still though, they are distracting the Banditos from following through with that minion wave. As they start the rotation towards the top side, let's we'll see if a fight breaks out because of it. At this point, it's better off just to forfeit it and not let the, par get, let the Baron power play get more. Yeah, at this point, for SBK, they need to concede these T2 towers and just hope to God they can defend those moves. But out goes the Cataclysm, try to find Civil instead! He gets Silver Bolts in the face for it! And this is looking great for the Blaze Banditos! They found three so far, Hackney using that Chrono Break, that's four down! And they might have just forfeited this game by trying to defend that tower! The Echo just got into the back line and blew up the Jinx. Yes, the J4 had the perfect engage with the Galio. Oh, but the Galio is just not strong right now. T-minus couldn't get in there and the Jinx couldn't free hit. So when you don't play around your win condition, which is that Jinx, you're just asking to lose this game. Right now, Civil, he is popping off and putting the team on his back. Yeah, absolutely great display, but overall, we've said it right before it happened. Forfeit the inner tower. It is not worth it on a Baron power play, and now that Baron power play is ever so much more empowered. It's a lot more than what it should have been at this point in the game. I don't, I don't know. Right now, this is not looking good for SBK. The only thing that Banditos have to do, they just have to take on a 5v5 fight and peel the vein and let her just free hit the front line. For Banditos, they want to do that front to back style. And if they're allowed to do it, especially with a vein who has the Rage Blade, has Bork, has PD, 
they're just gonna have a great time just melting like butter the Galio, the Braum, the Trundle, the J4. I don't know, Vayne right now, this is just her game to win. Yeah, it's exactly what they need. Trying to play this front to back, it's not going to work for SBK. Trying to play this as a team fight, it's not going to work for SBK. At this point, it's all about just getting lucky and hoping Blaze Bandito's misplay. You try and delay the game, but with Super Minions knocking at your door in two different lanes, it's way too difficult now. They need nothing short of a miracle to come back. See, and this is the issue with picking, you know, Galio J4. Those are teamfight champions. You don't really have wave clear other than the Jinx, but the Jinx can't be everywhere. This isn't Naruto. She can't shadow clone Jutsu and put herself in three lanes to wave clear. So now you just have the Super Minions pushing in, and it's a 3v5 in this bot lane to try and hope to God that you can hold this in his tower. But the fact that it is a grouping of five does give a little bit of leniency over to SBK because it means evasive only has to deal with those waves without the super minions. Just clear it out with rockets and try and do a quick rotate to pick up the super minions in other lanes. But does look like Lace Banditos are not going to give that luxury. Instead, Nub Poofa goes in and he's instantly taken out. But the hero's oh, entrance hello. is going to work. Still invasive. Is set up in prime position to find kill after kill. He just needs to get one. Finds one. Wants to chain it up to two. Looking for Cool Crab. Cool Crab gets stunned up, but the bubble comes out. That's going to defend a little bit for the Blaze Banditos. And that shows you the power that Invasive has if he's allowed to pop off. Yeah, no, that was a four-man cataclysm into the heroic entrance. And the thing is, the Jinx was just back there free hitting. But right now, you still have Jason Echo alive. Those are still threats to your structures, and you do have to be careful. The Galio teleport was expended to save the inhibit or to save the Nexus Tower. So that's another piece that Bandidos just got. So it is a moment to breathe, but it's one, it's a breath that's not actually going to last that long though, because two critical things are coming up for the next fight. That's going to be the flash of Civil and the fact that Civil just bought a Guardian Angel. It's going to take a lot of work to take him down. Last fight, he did not have flash. That's why that Cataclysm was so critical. That's why that hero's entrance was so critical. Now that he has these resources up, it is very scary if you're SPK Crimson to find similar results twice. Unless you're able to blow up Civil, your fight is basically done. Because you're right, Civil did just straight die in that fight. And once Civil is dead, yes, you still have Echo to do a lot of damage, but there's no reason as to why he should be able to get into the back line. That's why he was able to escape. He just never found an opening. I really thought they were going to go in and fight that since it was 4v5. Or 5v4, but guess not. Yeah, so they went to establish vision around that Baron, but supers are knocking at the base. So at this point, if you're Blaze, this is exactly what you do. You pressure the Baron and you force them to respond to it and let those supers pile in. But this does put off a very scary situation if you're SBK. If you don't get this right, it's going to go all too badly for them. But still, invasive has not been touched on that backside. He's getting off rocket after rocket. Blaze Banditos can't find the target. Now Zufa goes in. They find one kill onto T minus. And now Invasive is being attacked critically low. Mickey does little pushing forward. This could be the end of the game. Invasive still trying to pop off. Does not get excited because that's a Guardian Angel pop. And he's the last member remaining. They only found Hackney. And only Invasive is alive. They set their sights to close out this game and put themselves with redemption as they look to take down the team that took them down in the earlier weeks. Yeah, and that's going to be GG. The Jinx can't defend this. Uh, come on, no. Jinx. You can do it. But nope, they're just going to hit the Nexus. And that's going to be the game for Banditos. GG in the chat. Yeah, back and forth, these teams fought. Very, very rough game. It does show that they do have some level of equal ground because officially in this season, they are now 1-1 apiece. SPK have beaten Blaze Banditos in the past. Blaze Banditos just beat them now. 
And even with the way this game ran, it did feel a little bit back and forth. It did feel like there was some spark of life from SPK, but Blaze Banditos just lit a fire and they burned down the base of SPK Crimson. Yeah, SPK, they did have the better team fighting composition, but, you know, you threw all your pieces at Banditos when you're so far behind instead of waiting for them to be aggressive towards you and protect the Jinx. At this point, the Jinx had no lifesteal. I feel it was a tad bit of a mistake by her to go with Last Whisper. She needed the lifesteal to be able to sustain throughout the entire fight. Yes, there is a tad bit of armor on Banditos, but not enough to warrant a Last Whisper yet. So I feel that's a critical mistake by Invasive, and that might have cost her the entire fight. Because if she could have stayed healthy and stayed up a bit more, she might have been able to hit into the back line and just completely change the way the fight came out. Yeah, I don't even know if that would be enough, though, because when it comes down to it, if Invasive has jumped on, that's pretty much it. Invasive is dead soon to follow. When it comes down to it, it's just can Invasive get off enough damage before they manage to get on him? If he does, that is a dead Blazing Banditos. He pops off, gets excited, can potentially clean up the fight. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, Blaze Banditos are victorious. They played the better game off the back of Civil and overall GG to them. Yeah. And I mean, that's just that's just the end of that. That'll be the end of uh, the Elder League week. What week are we up to? We are week seven. Yes. Week six. No, week six. <laughs> We're week six, boys. Yeah. We got three more weeks. Yeah, we're good. Week number six. So, yeah, thank you for joining us. It was a hell of a day, even though we had so many reschedules. Ultimately, yep. good games of League of Legends. No other way to put it. Any closing statement, sort of? No, I have none. I hope the teams that uh, ended up getting smashed this week go back, look at what they did incorrectly. And come back next week fighting because playoffs is just around the corner and they can still make it in. And that's going to do it here for the casting desk. My name is Desarux, followed by my co-caster Sordo. Thank you for joining us for Ascension Esports Elder League.